Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do want to say tonight, Barak, you all, Yisrael, yeah. those that gather here with us at Teshua, yeah. those that are listening by V of live stream tonight, we do Barak, you all, yes, we do. and you are in our prayers daily. Hallelujah. Yeah. That y'all will continue to strengthen us, yeah. draw us closer yeah. unto each other, yes. and more importantly, unto him, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I do want to continue somewhat why I left off concerning the sevenfold voice of Almighty Yahweh. And when I somewhat brought the message to a close, we were talking about the ish or the fire of Almighty Yahweh. So I do want to continue or start by reading to Helium, Psalms chapter 29, verse 3, concerning the sevenfold voice of Almighty Yahweh. And there's a specific I want to deal with tonight. Hallelujah. I want to lay the foundation Lay the footer so that the messages that may come after this will be on point, that it will be sturdy, and that we understand Yisrael. Right, we must understand the time and the season that we are in, where we are in Torah, that we may follow the footsteps of Yahshua HaMashiach, for he is the Torah. He is Torah. He is the Mishpah, the word of Almighty Yahweh. So in Tehillim Psalms, I want to begin reading 29, verse 3. And we have gone through quite a few of the voices of Almighty Yahweh, his ish, as he speaks unto Yisrael, his dabar. The voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. The Almighty of splendor, he thunders. Yahweh is upon many waters. The voice of Yahweh is powerful. The voice of Yahweh is full of majesty, of power, of honor, of splendor. The voice of Yahweh breaks the cedars. I don't know how many of us remember talking about the cedars of Lebanon, how he breaks the cedars and the pillars, those strong things of Yisrael. I believe all those, we have those on recording, Yisrael. I want to move on. Yahweh breaks the cedars even of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip as the calf. Lebanon and Syria are like a young wild or ox. Verse 7. The voice of Yahweh divides the flames of Ish or the flames of fire. And I did spend some time on that, Yisrael. Right. And, and I'm going to come back to this because it's, you know, the Torah of Yahweh is a living Torah. It always expands. The abundance of Yahweh. We talked about that. The abundance of Almighty Yahweh. But I want to start tonight in verse 8. The coal, the voice of Yahweh, shakes the wilderness. I want to begin tonight by talking about the wilderness. What is the purpose of the wilderness, Yisrael? Yes. As we look back at Torah, understanding Mizraim, as they were in Egypt, what caused them to be placed there? It was by the will of Almighty Yahweh. The Torah explains that actually the remnants of Yisrael were actually birthed in that system of Mizraim. So what happened? What does the system of Mizraim do? What was the purpose of Yahweh bringing Yisrael, his chosen, his elect, out of this system? Why? Because Mizraim raped the house of the time that should have been given unto Almighty Yahweh. They cannot bring the offerings of Yahweh, the Shabbat unto Yah, in the bondage of, Yisra of Mizraim under the king or that king. We do understand that there was a changing of the kings in Mizraim. Yes. And that king, because they feared or he feared the population of Yisrael, because even though they were work, they multiplied. Yes. Yahweh calls them to be fruitful and to multiply and become a people mighty in number, the nation of Yisrael. Yet because of the oppression of Mizraim, the work, the slavery, the labors, it took from the time that Yahweh desired Yisrael to offer an offering unto him. What do we see in this time and age, Yisrael? We see our work schedules, our jobs, take away from the time that should be put to Yahweh. Our aspirations, our will, what we desire, what we want, that does not walk according to the lines of Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, it takes from the time of Yah. We have very little to seconds to, for the time of Almighty Yahweh what to offer up praises. Toda, yes. Thanksgiving. Yes. 
to honor his feast days, the days that he desires us to, Zakar, to remember him. The system has raped us of that Yisrael. So what must Yahweh do as he did in Mizraim? He must bring Yisrael into the midbar, into the wilderness. Into the wilderness. Why? That we may be cleansed of all the filth, the things that have been dumped in us while we were in Mizraim. And it takes a process. It took quite a while. Yahweh had to kill off many of those of the house that it may enter into the promised land. He had to cleanse the house. Trials and tribulations came unto Yisrael. Battles that they had to endure. We must endure those same battles, but first we must be brought into the wilderness. And what will Yahweh do while we're in the wilderness? He's going to shake it. He's going to contort it. He's going to cause the place that he desired us to be moved into out of this system for us to be tried. To shake it. It's somewhat described as being braided and woven tightly together. Anguish and pain, trials and tribulation, hurt shall come unto the house of Israel while we're in the wilderness. Why? What's the purpose? It's a time of preparation. And if we even know if we look back in Torah, Yahweh, he really didn't intend for, me, for Israel to dwell in the wilderness as long as they did. But there was so much filth, so much sin that is in us that he must take us the long route around. Yes. Yahweh, he desires us to take the short path. He wants us to enter into his, his rest, into his milk, into his kingdom, Israel. But we make it so hard because of our sin, our transgression, our iniquity. We don't love our op and our hope as we should. And what does that do? It lengthens the time. We know that in the last day that Yahweh, he said he will shorten the times. Why? Because if he did not, there would not be a remnant of Israel, but I'll save Israel. So we do not have the time in this day as the conditions did back then that Yahweh dealt. Yahweh must do, he has done a new thing. Through Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. through his Mitzvah, through his Torah, through his Malach, his speakers, those that bring forth the word of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because it is high time, Yisrael, that we get into the place that Yahweh desires us to be. Because if we don't get there and he doesn't place us, and we're not placing that place, we're not going to be preserved until the end of all things. And I will prove that in Torah. The voice of Yahweh shakes the wilderness. Yahweh shakes the wilderness of Kadesh or Kodesh. It simply just means set apart, Israel. Sure he he desires us to be set apart in a wilderness place, a wide open place where there's no bondage. Yes. Where we can offer unto Yahweh the time, the, the incenses that he desires. What is that? It's in our praises, Israel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Leviticus, I want to begin. Yes. Wayira, Leviticus chapter 16. Verse 1. Where did this all begin? If we look throughout Torah and the uh, system that I have, it comes up many times all throughout Torah. From the beginning of all things uh, unto Revelation to the ending of the Torah, Israel. So it is vitally important that we understand what the wilderness is. Are we in the wilderness? Have we moved on out of Mizraim? That we may be cleansed, purged of all those things. Zarkane Benjamin mentions many a times that we have come out of Mizraim, but Mizraim is not out of us. Yes, yes, yes. So we must enter into the wilderness or this place that Yahweh desires us to be, to try us and to cleanse us, Israel. It says in Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 1, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe after the death of the two sons of Aharon, when they offered before Yahweh and died. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Speak unto Aharon your brother, that he come not at all times into the Kodesh place within the veil before the mercy seat of Almighty Yahweh. So, so Yahweh is saying, he's given him a, a exact space and time which to enter in uh, to that Kodesh place of Almighty Yahweh to be in his presence. But you know, because of what Yahshua HaMashiach has done, Yisrael, his offering, his obedience, giving his body for Yisrael as a scapegoat or as an offering for our sins. We are able, Yisrael, to come before the mercy seat of Almighty Yahweh continually. We're not restricted to a time or a day, any time, 
any time, any place. Because of what Yahshua HaMashiach has done, we are able to come before what? The mercy seat of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We know in the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat was set forth for the offering to be laid upon for the sins of the people of the congregation. Well, Yahshua HaMashiach, he sits at the hand of Almighty Yahweh at that mercy seat, Israel. It does not require the, the blood of the bullocks to cleanse the, the high priest or his co kohen. It is not required of the blood of the ram or of the goats or of the sheep, Yisrael, to pass our sin. Because even at that time or this time in Torah, yet the sin still remain among Yisrael. So we know that at that time, that at that time it was not made perfect. The offering unto Almighty Yahweh for sins. But we know at this time, Yahshua HaMashiach has made all things perfect. Lay all things in line that we can come freely. The Torah says we can even come boldly before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. I barak Yahweh for that tonight, Yisrael. Yah. That any time and place, whether I'm at my home or in, my, in a vehicle or at the job, I'm at the mercy seat of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Because of Yahshua HaMashiach. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, speak unto Aharon, your brother, that he come not at all times unto the Kodesh place, wherein the veil before the mercy seat, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. We know Yahshua HaMashiach sits at the mercy seat, Yisrael. Verse 3. Thus shall Aharon come into the Kodesh place with a young bull up for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. This was required oh, yes. at this time, Yisrael. Does Yahweh still require the blood sure. of the offering? Yes. What is that? We understand yes. who that is and what that is. The Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I want to make sure that I lay things line upon line, Yisrael, that we understand. Because it's very important that we understand what Yahweh has done. That we may escape the terror of his indignation upon this world, Yisrael. That we may flee into this wilderness place. Is there comfort in the wilderness? Yes, but it's also Yahweh's judgment in the wilderness. Is it, escape, is it a hiding place for Yisrael? Sure it is for a time, but it's also a time of trial and a time of testing, Yisrael. We must enter into the midbar of the wilderness. We must. We have to. Hallelujah. Verse 4, he shall put on the Kodesh linen coat and shall have the linen breached upon his flesh and shall be girdled with the linen girdle and with the linen diadem shall be his attire. These are the Kodesh garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and also put them on. What are the garments we should have on? We should have on these garments, Israel. Yes. We should be wearing these garments. Because these garments show that we are Kodesh, that we are cleansed before Almighty Yahweh. The process is still needed today. Yes. Hallelujah. We must have on the garments of, of, of the Kohen. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water. Have not we been washed? Yes. Cleansed by the Dom of Yahshua? This freely flow that cleanses us day by day. Yes, yes Yah, that flow from the veins of Yahshua HaMashiach. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. And you will find as I read, the cleansing is very important, Yisrael Yah. Without the cleansing, we have no hope. Without the cleansing of the Dom, we cannot move forward. Without the cleansing of the Dom, there's no redemption. There's no atonement for us, Yisrael Yah. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aharon shall offer his bullock of his sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and also for the house. It's important that I read this, Israel, that we understand what is coming um, that we're heading to. We're just walking down this road. Hallelujah. 
And he shall take the two goats and present them before Yahweh at the door of the tent of the congregation. Don't you know there have been two goats, two offerings that have been set at the tent or before the congregation of Almighty Yahweh, before the face of Almighty Yahweh? Who is that? What are those examples? The Torah of Almighty Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, and the house of Yisrael. Those are the two examples, Yisrael. Let me, let me keep on reading. Verse 18. And Aharon, he shall cast lots. What was, the, lot, what was the, the lots that were cast at this time? It was simply stones that were cast forth. Why? Because in that similar to the leading of, of what shall be done next, or the order that the offerings should be offered before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who is our stone? Who is our rock? Yeah, yeah. Who is the stone that has been rejected? Yeah. What does the order of the congregation of Yisrael, what do we abide by at this time? It is by Yahshua HaMashiach. Right. The Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He is our lot. He sets our course and the path that we should walk in according to the Mishnah, the Torah, our guidance, Yisrael. Upon the two goats, one lot for Yahweh and the other lot for the scapegoat. Hallelujah. I want to move from this to 1 Kephah chapter 2, verse 1. Concerning Yahshua HaMashiach being our stone, Yisrael. If we cast any lot, let it be Yahshua HaMashiach. We try to cast or make decisions on our own, Yisrael, and it does not work. It's not of the order of Almighty Yahweh. So what stone has been cast for Yisrael that has set the course or the, the, the path that we must take to the end of all things, Yisrael? Understanding the death of Yahshua HaMashiach. It should have been Yisrael. We was worthy of the death, Yisrael. Yahshua was without sin, without spot, without blemish or any such thing. But yet it was appointed. It was of the leading of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh that he go. Hallelujah. Before us, Yisrael. First Kephah chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore, lying aside all malice. Who, 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 who is this to? Is it to the world? Is it to those that do not walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Or is he, is he speaking to Yisrael in Kephah in First Peter? So we must, he said we must lay these things aside, Yisrael. Malice. It says some guile. It says all. All guile. The bitterness. The things that we hold in our love, Yisrael. Those things that are not acceptable before Almighty Yahweh. And hypocrisies. Envies. And evil speaking. Why would he speak this unto the house? Was this judgment of a farce? Was it not true amongst the house of Yisrael? Sure, it's true amongst Yisrael. It's in the house of Yah. That's why we must have those that sound the alarm, that speak verbosely, loud. Those that do not hold the truth or this sword in vain. Verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk, of the Torah. Do we desire the sensitive milk yes. of the Torah? It's something that we must have, Yisrael, for our nourishment, for our growth, that our bones become strong, that we're able to stand strong before Almighty Yahweh and to endure the attacks of the enemy. We must desire the sincere milk of the Mishra, the Torah, that why? That you may grow thereby. If so, but you have tested that Yahweh, tasted that Yahweh is kind. Do we know Yahweh is kind? That he is merciful? Have we not tasted of the Ahab of Almighty Yahweh? Isn't it sweet, Israel? Hallelujah. He's sweet, I know. I look back on my life, and even though there are things that I somewhat have gone through, yet it's been sweet. Why? Because I understand what Yahweh is doing. In my life, 
I understand what he is doing at the house of Israel. So even though we can look back on all the things we have come up in, that we have gone through, it's all been for our learning. Yeah. Yahweh has brought us through those with victory, yeah. with endurance. And as I look back on those things, I realize how sweet Yahweh is. Hallelujah. He is sweet, Israel. He is precious unto me, unto Israel. Verse 4. To whom coming as to a living stone. Is not Yahshua Hamashiach this living stone? Did I not talk about the lots, Israel, that were cast? And it determined which or whether the goat shall perish or which one shall be set free, Israel. I'm glad that Yahshua Hamashiach was cast, that he come down. Hallelujah. That it was not us that had to die or face that, that death in our sins, Israel. That we have redemption through Yahshua Hamashiach. But it says here that this stone was disallowed indeed of men. They didn't want to walk according to the standards of Almighty Yahweh, that which he had laid out, Yisrael. But it's chosen of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was not those lots at that time, was that not chosen of Almighty Yahweh for the guidance of Yisrael? But chosen of Yahweh, and not only that, precious. Hallelujah. This stone's precious. We should build our imuna upon this precious stone. Our treasures, we should put it on this stone. We should put all upon Yahshua HaMashiach because he's able to bury Israel. This stone is strong. It talks about the lots even as being rough stones. Don't you know a rough stone, you can use that to smoothen the edges of other materials that are not as strong as the stone? Don't you know that's what the wicked or the, those that are against Yahweh, they don't want Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because it's a rough edge. He has to be rubbed into us, Yisrael, yeah. that we will come out smooth, come out the way that Yahweh intends for us to appear in his presence, Yisrael. Yeah. He says, you also, as lively stones, are we lively tonight? Hallelujah. Don't we have the Ruah of Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we should be alive, Yisrael. Yeah. We should not be dead and trespasses and in our sins. We should not be slow to give Yahweh the honor and the praise that is due to his name, Israel. We should be alive tonight. Well, Zach, I'm tired. You should be alive. Hallelujah. We have the wealth of Yahshua HaMashiach abiding within us, Israel. You also, as lively stones, not dead stones, are built up a spiritual house. A Kodesh office of Kohim to offer up the offerings of Almighty Yahweh. Upset, acceptable to Yahweh by who? Yahshua HaMashiach. It would not be acceptable to Yah by any other means, only by and through Yahshua HaMashiach, our Messiah. Verse 6. Therefore also, it is contained in the Torah, in the scripture, the Kaveh, the Katu. Yeah. Behold, I lay in Zion, it says, a chief cornerstone. That chief cornerstone, that first stone that is laid in a building is very key. It is very important because all the other stones that are laid are shot off of that stone. Even at the building of the tabernacle here, there had to be one stone that is laid. And the one that lays that stone has to know what he's doing. Yeah. It cannot be off the line. It has to be somewhat plumb and bob. That when you, see what we usually do, we lay one stone on one end and another stone on the other end. And we pull what's called a line. And we lay the other stones or the blocks according to that line. So if the first stone is off, then all the other stones or the bricks or blocks that are laid, they're all going to be off, Yisrael. So that's why it is important that the chief cornerstone, which is Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh had to lay him down. Hallelujah. Yahweh had to plant him. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, chosen. And he that believes on him shall not be confounded, shall not be confused. 
shall not be bound, Israel. To you therefore which I believe, he is precious. But to them which are disobedient, it says, the stone which the builders have disallowed. So those that are disobedient disallow this stone, Yahshua HaMashiach. They disallow the Torah of the Mishpah of Almighty Yahweh. The same is made head of the corner. Did it say he was made the head? Yes, that's what it said. It does not say the tail. He was not laid at the back or at the end, but at the beginning of all things, Israel. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Sure. Was he not an offense, Israel? Right. Was not at one time Yahshua was an offense unto us, rough, sure. uncut, a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the Torah, at the word, yes. being disobedient. Sure. Where unto also they are appointed. Verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. Yes. We have been elected of Almighty Yahweh, not by man's hands. A royal office of Kohim. A Kodesh nation. A people that has been set apart. A peculiar people. That you should show forth what? The praises. It's about the praises, Yisrael. How can we offer up the total or the praises unto Almighty Yahweh when not giving him apt time? Our minds being consumed by the affairs of this world. That is what this system has been brought up to do, Yisrael. We have been brought up in this system. But it's going, to take, it's going to take, by the leading of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, and by the Dham of Yahshua HaMashiach, to bring us out into the wilderness. Why? That we may offer up the praises unto Almighty Yahweh. That we won't be bound. There's also a system that dwells here in the mind, Yisrael. We allow our flesh, our desires to lead us. They bind us. That we cannot offer unto Yahweh what he desires. Yes, Yahweh, he's going to get what he wants, Yisrael, despite yourself. He gives nations for Yisrael and people for us. Why? Did not he, did not he give Mizraim? Look at, look at all the curses that was brought unto Mizraim. Because Pharaoh would not let Yisrael go. Hallelujah. But yet it was all in the plan of Almighty Yahweh. Why? That he may get honor. He wants the honor that is due to his name, Israel. It's all about worship. It's all about the praises unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So should we allow our flesh to get in the way of the time that we should give unto Almighty Yahweh? Everything we do, everything we put our hands to, Israel, should be unto Almighty Yahweh. We labor in the workplaces, it should be as unto Almighty Yahweh. We should not do it as to please in the flesh, but we should do it as to please in Yahweh. Hallelujah. That's what he wants, Israel. So he's, he must lead us into a wilderness place. He must lead us into a place where we are not bound, where he can shake us, where he can twist us, where he can mold us, Israel, make us what he desires us to be in this generation and in this time. Hallelujah. I want Yahweh to work out his works, his Sadiq and me, Israel, whatever it takes. I know we say that, say that so easily, Israel, but our desire should be to please Almighty Yahweh. So what he has placed before me, do we not think he will not enact or give us the tools or the equipment to do the task that he has placed us to do, Israel? Hallelujah. So let us do it with all vigor. Let us not turn from the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, from his reproof, however it may come, from his exaltations, hallelujah, from his Torah, that we may continue in this path. Did not Mizraim have a path that they had to go in? They had to follow Moshe. Out of Mizraim, they had a pillar of cloud to lead them by day and a pillar of fire by night, the issue of Almighty Yahweh. That's how we're going to be led, led in this dark age, in this dark time, Yisrael. By the fire, by the ish of Almighty Yahweh. Let me continue. That you should show forth the praises of him yes, yes. who has called you. Who has called us? Yes. Who has called us, Yisrael? Yes. Our Abba, Almighty Yahweh. Who has called us, what? Out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. 
out of confusion and to his understanding and to his light, Yisrael, that we may understand the purpose of the works that he is doing, that we understand why we are going through what we're going through and why we must endure and why we must stand as a people and as a nation. Verse 10, which in time past, we were not a people, we were not a nation, but are now the people of Almighty Yahweh, which have not attained mercy, but now have attained mercy. We have attained Yahweh's mercy. Hallelujah. His eyes has been set upon us, Yisrael. We are the chosen of Almighty Yahweh. So should we abide in his mitzvah, his Torah? Yes. The stone Yahshua HaMashiach that has, been laid, that has been laid, must we lay our lives or copy the life of Yahshua HaMashiach, everything he did, Yisrael? Just as he was laid, we must be laid, Yisrael. Sure, straight, plumb before Almighty Yahweh. That's what he desires us to do. Hallelujah. And we cannot do that in this mind of Mizraim or in the system of Mizraim, of Egypt, Yisrael. We must come out of her. He cries for his people to come out of this system, to come out of this whole church, Yisrael, out of this system. It's just bondage. That's all it is. To keep us from offering up to Yahweh the praises that he wants, the praises that he desired. Offering the sweet-smelling incense unto him, hallelujah, that he may be pleased. Told to Yahweh. Let's move on to Leviticus. We're here, right? chapter 16, verse 9, where we had left off Israel. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 9. Hallelujah. I do not plan to be, on, be long tonight, Israel, but it's important that I lay this foundation because the message that come forth after this, as we understand the shaking of Almighty Yahweh in the wilderness, Israel. He wants us in the wilderness. He wants us to come out of Mizraim. He wants us to come out of this mindset. This mindset. It says in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 9, as we continue. And Aharon shall bring the goat upon which Yahweh lot fell, or the stones, and offer him up for a sin offering. We know that Yahshua HaMashiach, he is our sin offering, Israel. It fell on all Yahweh. He provided this offering for us. Hallelujah. Verse 10. But the goal on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be present alive or shall be left alive before Almighty Yahweh. One thing we're going to understand or get into as I continue, Israel, that goat or that scapegoat that was left alive, yet all the sins were placed on that one. And even as it was let go by a man that was made ready to handle the goats, you know, goats are very brutish, especially the strong goat. They don't want to go where you want to lead them. But yet the sins were, pre- were placed on the scapegoat. And he had the two escape into the wilderness, bearing all those sins, bearing the iniquities of the people. Hallelujah. We know at this time that Yahweh has made a more perfect way. That all all of our sins, our iniquities, Yisraeli, have been laid upon Yahshua HaMashiach. So even when we look back on Mizraim and Yisraeli as they come out of Mizraim, yet their sins still yet remained on them as they enter into the wilderness. Yahweh has given us a perfect offering. That our sins don't have to rest upon our shoulders as we make the transition, Israel. We don't no longer have to be bound under this Torah or the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. As long as we walk and continue in the mishvah and to those things that Yahweh has commanded for us to do. We shouldn't be bearing our sins and our iniquities. If you're bearing the sins of this weight upon your shoulder, Israel, then Yahweh have mercy upon your nephesh. Because he has given us one that has washed all that away. That has taken all that away. He gave his life for us, Yisrael. Just as this example that is given here in Torah, that that life that the the lot landed upon towards Almighty Yahweh, the life of that one had to have been taken away. 
Hallelujah. And we know that Yahshua HaMashiach, his life was taken for the sins of all Yisrael. So we don't have to bear these burdens, Yisrael. We have been made free. We have been set free. Hallelujah. By Yahshua HaMashiach. We have been set free. Why? That he may make this transition into the wilderness for a time, Yisrael. That we may be tried. That we may come out as pure gold. Even the wilderness being a type of ish or a type of fire or a type of furnace, even for Yisrael. That all those things that are in us that are not of Almighty Yahweh may be purged out. Did not it take a great purging in the wilderness for Mizraim? 40 years? Yisrael? Hallelujah. It took a long time. And still Yahweh, he had to let those that were of the use into the place that he desired, into the lands that he desired them to be, Yisrael. He had to cut off many of those. Hallelujah. Sure he Yahweh, he knows how to cleanse us, how he knows what needs to be done. So our sins have been set upon Yahshua HaMashiach. Let me read on. Verse 10 again. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be present or saved alive before Almighty Yahweh to make an atonement with him. We know that Yahshua HaMashiach, he is our atonement, Israel. Yah. He is our atonement. He makes reconciliation before Almighty Yahweh, the plea before Almighty Yah. And to let him go for a scapegoat into what it says? Into the wilderness, into the midbar. Yes, yes. Had to go into the wilderness. Why? There's a purpose, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. I may not get to that tonight, but as I endeavor in this understanding, in this Torah, in Israel, Yah, um, it will come forth. Hallelujah. Everything will come forth in Yahweh's time. The nuance is the truth of Almighty Yahweh, that we understand what he's doing in this hour, Yisrael. We need to escape as a people into the wilderness that we may offer the offering unto Almighty Yahweh. But yet he desired us to enter into that place without sin, Yisrael. Without sin. Yisrael, when they left Mizraim, they entered into the wilderness full of all kinds of things. Traits that they have learned amongst the Egyptians, being birthed, Amongst the Egyptians, so they learn their ways, their gods, their sacrifices, how they sacrifice them to their idols, and all those things, Yisrael. So it took the wilderness and the time in the, in the wilderness for those things to be purged out. So must it be in this hour, Yisrael. We must be purged. We must be purged. Moving on to verse 11 of Leviticus, Yira. And Aharon shall bring the bullock for a sin offering which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house. And shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is before himself. So he had to provide a sin offering even for himself at this time, and for his house, Yisrael, that he may enter into the most Kodesh place of Almighty Yahweh. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off of the altar before Almighty Yahweh, but you know those, those coals of fire, Yisrael, they are still um, important even unto this day. Even at Yahweh's throne, those coals still burn. We should pray for the coals of Almighty Yahweh to be upon the lips of the Kohen, upon the Malach, those that bring forth the word of Almighty Yahweh. Burning coals of fire from off the altar before Yahweh. And his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it in the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before Almighty Yahweh, yeah. that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he died not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his fingers seven times. He had to do it seven times. That shows a perfection, Yisrael, a completeness. So he, he had to do it yet seven times. I brought Yahweh for the Dhamma Yahshua. That only took one time. Hallelujah. For him to wipe away all of our sins, Yisrael. Should we trample his dung or his blood under our feet? Should we continue to sin before Almighty Yahweh? No. He forbids that, Yisrael. So Yahshua, we know he gave his life once for all men, for the redemption of his nephesh. 
Verse 15. Then shall you kill the goat of the sin offering. We talked about the sin offering, the goat that had to die. That is for the people or for the congregation, for Yisrael, to bring his blood within the veil. And to do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. He had to sprinkle it seven times, Yisrael, for the sin of Yisrael. And to sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And in verse 16, and he shall make an atonement for the Kadosh place because of the uncleanness, uncleanliness of the children of Yisrael. For the uncleanness. That was the purpose of it all. Because of the filth that lurks within us, Yisrael, in our minds, in our lives, in those secret places where we think Yahweh cannot find those sins, those thoughts, Yisrael. That's why men, that's why we reject the light, Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because it shines in those dark places and it reveals those things that are hidden, Yisrael. I want Yahweh to reveal all those things that are hidden in me. To let the light of Yahshua shine in my bosom, Yisrael, that I may come clean. Hallelujah. And because of their transgressions and all of their sins, and so shall he do for the tent of the congregation that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. Do we dwell in uncleanliness this day, Yisrael? It still requires the dumb of Yahshua. Let us not trample the dumb of Messiah under our feet, Yisrael, as if it's something that doesn't mean anything to us. Hallelujah. It's of great importance unto Yisrael. Because if it wasn't for the Dhamma Yahshua, then these very same acts that I am reading to us, Yisrael, we would still have to do today. Can you imagine this? Hallelujah. What we would have to do? We would not even have the where or the wherewithal even to do this, Yisrael. I barak Yahweh for the Dhamma Yahshua, the stone, hallelujah, that he has laid. That has been cast for Yisrael. The lot that has been cast for us, Yisrael. Verse 17. And there shall be no sins of man, of Adam, in the tent of the congregation, when he goes in to make an atonement in the Kodesh place, until he comes out. And have made an atonement for himself, and for his household, and for the congregation of Yisrael. That's what Yahshua has done. He has made an atonement for all the house of Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 18. And shall go out to the altar that is before Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know he is before the altar, before the throne of Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. Daily Yisrael. To make an atonement for it. And shall take of the dom or the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar and round about. So it had it been put before the altar of Almighty Yahweh. But you know Yahweh still requires the dom before his presence, Yisrael. When he sees Yahshua HaMashiach, he sees the dom. The purity of the blood of one without spot, without blemish, or without any such thing, Yisrael. Verse 19, and he sprinkled the dom upon it with his finger seven times and cleansed it and hallowed it from the uncleanness of the children of Yisrael. Verse 20, and we has, when he had made an end of reconciliation in the Kodesh place and in the tent of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Do you remember there was one that was yet yeah. left alive? The lot laid on for one to escape into the wilderness, alive Yisrael. And Aharon shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat. And confess over him, it says, Cole, all the iniquities of the children of Yisrael. Do we confess all of our iniquities, Yisrael, before Almighty Yahweh? We must do that. We must confess all. Unto Almighty Yahweh. We can't hide anything from him, Yisrael. So we must confess our sins before Almighty Yahweh. And our iniquities. And it says, and all their transgressions. Does it say, Cole? Does it say all their transgressions in verse 21, chapter 16? And all their transgressions and all of their sins. What is sin? 
It's the transgression of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We have transgressed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Yah. Putting them upon the head. What did he put it? Upon the head of the live goat. Upon the scapegoat. And shall send him away in the hand of a fit man. Now this man was one that was prepared. One that was strong. One that was able to accomplish this task. And to a fit man's hands. And two, it says, the midbar into the wilderness. So in this act or this example, it shows forth the one goat that the lot laid upon before mighty Yahweh, yeah. it had to die. Its blood had to shed, be shed. The life had to be given. But yet unto the other one, where all the sins was laid upon that one, and it had to be led into the wilderness, into the midbar, Yisrael Yah. Yahweh has not left us alone in this time and age, Yisrael Yah. Because of Yahshua HaMashiach, his obedience, what he has done, Yisrael Yah, being laid upon that stake, hung there, suffering, bleeding, he has taken away all those sins, Yisrael Yah. So should we escape into this place with sins on our back at this time? No. Why? Because of what Yahshua HaMashiach has done. We should not enter into the midbar or to this place where Yahweh desires us to offer his offerings. To Zakai to remember him and all that he has done with sin on our backs, Yisrael Yah. Oh, yeah. With sin upon our heads. With sin in our mind. With sin and transgression in our lives, Yisrael Yah. Yahweh is not going to accept that at this time. Why? Because he has provided an offering for us. In right. Yahshua HaMashiach. In Yahshua HaMashiach, all those things that we are reading now, yet Yahweh still required the dawn. Yet in that perfect offering, he is our atonement, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Was there not atonement that had to be made even in Mizraim, the dom of the lamb, at Passover, when the malak of death went over Mizraim? Was there not blood that had to be set upon the doorpost? And what happened? That was a type of escape, Yisrael, from the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Even those that were not of what we say are called, uh, it's called the house of Israel, Yah, if they obeyed that Mishpah, that Torah, then their lives were spared from the, the death Malak, Yisrael, Yah. So it still, he still requires the dawn, still requires the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he sits there right beside our, our Ba, making intercession for us daily, Yisrael, Yah. So what should we do? All he asks us to do is to obey to have a moon on, to believe in his finished works that he has done. The works at this time were not, were, were somewhat not complete, Israel. Yah. But yet, Yahweh desires us, we make this transition into the wilderness, as we flee from Israel, that we will head into this place of cleansing, of his purging, where he shall twist and contort the wilderness, that we may come forth as pure gold, that we'll be ready to enter into yeah, yeah. the promised land or into Yahweh's kingdom. Hallelujah. Don't you want to go there, Yisrael Yah? Don't you want to see the face of Yahshua HaMashiach in Shalom? I want to see his face in Shalom, Yisrael Yah. I don't want to go with sins upon my head and on my shoulders. Hallelujah. Especially when Yahweh has made a way for us to escape all of this. Hallelujah. Oh, to the Yah, to the Yahweh. I bring Yah, Yah for all things, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. Let us continue, verse 22, chapter 16. And it says, and the goat, the one that escaped, the one that he allowed to go alive into the wilderness. It says that the goat bared upon him all of their iniquities to the land of no inhabitation. That's the wilderness, Israel. Yes, yes. Where there's no city, where there's no place. At this time, the wilderness, when Mizraim went into the wilderness, there were, there were no other inhabitants in those lands that they uh, passed through, except when they came to a city. Hallelujah. And so they kept to, came to an encampment. It was barren land, wasteland. Yahweh provided, even at that time, everything that they needed. Their shoes did not wear. Sure, sure. Even at times, even as we look back, and I will get to this as we move forward in this concerning the shaking of the wilderness. The complaining. The grumbling amongst Yisrael, Yah. even seeing all the things that Almighty Yahweh has done, brought them out of Mizraim by marvelous wonders, great acts, and yet they still question Yah. Do we find ourselves still questioning Yahweh? 
after what he has brought us through. He has brought us this far by moon now, but we still find ourselves questioning Almighty Yahweh. How is he going to do this? How is he going to provide that? How are we going to endure this? Let us not murmur, Israel, when we are afflicted in our flesh, where our moon is being tried, Israel. Let us not murmur before Almighty Yahweh. It is for our testing. It is for our purification. It is for to prove ourselves before Almighty Yahweh to see if his Torah shall fall. His Torah shall never fail, Yisrael. Yeah. It shall never fail. Hallelujah. Has he not written that in our love, Yisrael? Yeah. So if we abide by the Torah, and if we walk after the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahshua HaMashiach, then everything should go smoothly. And when I say that, everything should go according to the plan of Almighty Yahweh. And us as a people, as we understand what Yahweh is doing, we will not murmur. We will not complain. We will not question him. We will not charge Almighty Yahweh foolishly, Israel. Hallelujah. We will not charge him foolishly. We will do that many times, Israel. We Yahweh do what he said he would do. Sure, he's going to do what he said he'd do. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Verse 22. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities to the land of no inhabitation. And he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. Verse 23. And a Hiron shall come into the tent of the congregation and shall put off the linen or take off the garments we has put on when he went into the Kodesh place and shall leave them there. And he shall watch his flesh with water in the Kodesh place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offerings. And the burnt offering of the people and to make an atonement for himself and for the congregation for the people of Israel. And the fat, it talks about the fat in, chapter, in verse 25. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go of the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes. That just show the filthiness of the acts of the sin of Israel. They're filthy before Almighty Yahweh. I don't think we understand how filthy our sins are before Almighty Yahweh. He turned his face away from sin, Yisrael. Did he not turn his face from Yahshua HaMashiach when he, was upon, when he took upon all those things at the state, Yisrael? He put all of our sins upon him, upon his head, and his body, Yisrael, that, that we as a nation did not have to bear these wicked and these vile things, Israel. And bathe his flesh in water, and afterward come back into the camp. Verse 27. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought into, and to make atonement in the Kodesh place, shall one carry forth without of the camp. And they shall burn it in the fire, and shall burn the flesh, and also the done. So there wasn't any remains of any other offering that went forth for the sin offering Israel. Because of Yahshua HaMashiach, there's no remains of our sins. That's, the truth. That's what his purpose was. That these same sins would not remain. Did they not have to remove everything, any kind of remnants out of the camp or the congregation of Almighty Yahweh? Yes, yes. Showing the filthiness of the sins and the wickedness of Mizraim and Israel. It takes a purging, and it's only by the dawn that we're going to be purging this last hour. The dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. Not by the bullock, not by the doves, but by Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. It's the only way that we shall escape Israel. Verse 28. And he that burns them also shall wash his clothes, showing the filthiness of it, Israel, and bathe his flesh in water. And afterward, he shall come into the camp. Don't you know we only can come into the camp, into the presence of Yahweh, yes. by being cleansed by the water of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh? We should desire the reign of Almighty Yah, to pour out his Ruach upon Yisrael, to fill up our empty cups, Yisrael, up to the brim. That's what we should desire from Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Fill us with his Ruach, with his spirit, Yisrael, because we can't endure half this, this race or this time half-cocked, Yisrael. We cannot be half-full. 
We must be filled to the brim, overflowing with the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Or our journey will not be able. We cannot make this journey complete. Just as the five wise and the five foolish. There were those that did not have the oil that was needed. They keep their lamps burning, Israel. So allow the Torah of Yah to fill your lair, to fill your Ruah. Let us cease from these sin, sins that so easily beset us or set us aside out of the will of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, as I bring this message to a close tonight, Israel. I want our, our, our minds to be open unto the truth tonight, that we don't get weary, Israel. Hallelujah. It says here, now Moshe, he kept the flock. So we're, we're moving ahead of time here, Israel, in the Torah. Now Moshe kept his flock. And, and Yethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert, which is a barren place. It's, it's a type of wilderness, Yisrael. And came to the mountain of Almighty Yahweh, even to Horeb. And the Malak of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of ish, a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he took, and behold, the bush burned with fire. But this bush, it says, was not consumed. Can you imagine seeing that, Israel? Yes. This bush burning with fire, but yet it is not consumed. Verse 3, And Moshe said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while this bush is not burned. And, Yah and when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Yahweh called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And said, Moshe, Moshe, and he did say, here I am. Don't you know Yahweh, he still calls yeah. unto Yisrael, yeah. through Yahshua, Hamashiach. Oh, he calls unto us, Yisrael, yeah, continually. He know where we are. Yeah. Hallelujah. Did, did not he see Moshe? Yeah. It's not the eyes of Yahweh upon the Siddiq, upon his right, on the, the righteous Yisrael. Yeah. He has deemed us righteous in this generation. His Siddiq, his chosen. And he said, draw not nigh hither, hither, but put off your shoes from off your feet. For the place whereon you stand is Kodesh ground. Sure was that not Kodesh ground? Out in the wilderness? Yeah. It was out in the barren place, was it not? Yeah. It says here it was in the desert. A barren place. Yeah. Yet this bush burned with the anointing of Almighty Yahweh in this barren place, Israel. Yahweh knows what we need in the wilderness. He knows how to get our attention, Yisrael, as he got Moshe's attention in this burning place in the wilderness. So he's not going to leave us or forsake us, Yisrael. He is with us. He leads in God. Moshe's feet was led to this place that he may see this sight, Yisrael. Don't you believe Yahweh is leading us every step, every step of the way in this wilderness, Yisrael? Did not he lead Yisrael out of Mizraim? Every step of the way was ordained by Almighty Yahweh. Verse 6, moreover, he said, I am Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of your fathers, of your abbas, the sovereign ruler of Abram, and of Yitzhak, and of Yaakov. And Moshe, he hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Mizraim. Do we think Yahweh, he doesn't see our afflictions? Those that are listening by via of live stream, Yahweh, he understands our afflictions. He knows why we are going through what we go through and what we experience, Yisrael. He harbors us. He, he cares for us. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. The beatings, the, the forced labor among Yisrael, whereby they could not offer unto Yahweh the offers that he wanted at this time, Yisrael. See, they had no freedom in Mizraim, but yet in the wilderness place they had freedom where they could obey and do the will of Almighty Yahweh. 
by reason of their taskmasters. And Yahweh said, for I know their sorrow. Yahweh know our sorrows. Verse 8. I have come down to deliver them out of the land of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to an excellent land. Did they say an excellent land? A land flowing with abundance. With the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. With the riches of his Melchut, his kingdom, Israel. But we have to go through the wilderness. So there's a space that lies in between where we are and where Yahweh desires us to be. So we must go through the wilderness, Israel. And believe me, Yahweh, he's going to shake this wilderness. Anything that's not of him, it shall fall, it shall crumble, Israel. But we must enter into this wilderness. Hallelujah. The voice of Yahweh, the call of Yahweh, it shakes the wilderness, Israel. It says, up out of that land to an excellent land, a large land flowing with milk and with honey. To a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Let us uh, move down to verse 16. As I bring this to a close, Israel. Hallelujah. So there's a place that Yahweh he desires us to be. But we have to come out of Israel, Israel. We have to get rid of this mindset. We have to impel this flesh that hinders us. The flesh hinders. The flesh will enable you. It will stop you, Israel. If you don't abide by the Ruach and of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. It'll keep you from offering the offerings of, to Almighty Yahweh. Verse 16, he commands Moshe to go and gather the elders, the Zakain of Yisrael yeah. together. Very important, Yisrael, yeah, as I mentioned uh, during Sukkot. The gathering. Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of your Avaz, the sovereign ruler of Abram, Yitzhak, and of Yaakov, he appeared unto me saying, I have surely visited you and have seen which is done to you in Egypt, in Mizraim. And I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt. Did not he say that? Is it not, did not Yahweh abide upon his promise? This was a promise that he would deliver. Yahweh has promised us to deliver us out of our situations, Israel, out of Mizraim, whatever it may be. To the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites. To a land flowing with milk and with honey. And they shall hearken unto your voice, Moshe, and you shall come. You and the elders of Israel. That's why it's important for us to come together, Israel, especially us, Zalkain. To the king of Egypt. And you shall say to him, Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of the Hebrews, has met with us. And now let us go, we beseech you, three days journey into the wilderness. Did he say three days journey? Is that all it took? Was just three days, Israel? Journey into the wilderness that we may zabah, that we may offer an offering unto Almighty Yahweh, our Abba. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm going to stop right there, Israel, for now. But it's important. Yisrael, that we come out of Mizraim. Had not Yahweh provided an escape? Was not Moshe this type of escape at this time, Yisrael? A deliverance unto Yisrael to bring them out? Well, who is our deliverance? Our deliverance is only in Yahshua HaMashiach. He leads us, he guides us into all truth. Into all truth. So let us come out of Mizraim. That we may enter into this wilderness place. Hallelujah. We must enter into the wilderness. It has been ordained by Almighty Yahweh. We're not going to get around it, Israel. We're not going to get around the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. It's so high, we can't go over it. So low, we can't go under it. And it's so wide that we cannot go around it. So there's only one way. That is through the door of Yahshua HaMashiach. So we must go through, hallelujah, all things, all the things that Yahweh has prepared for us, Israel. Hallelujah, all things. And we must do it without murmuring, without complaining, 
without charging Yahweh foolishly for what he has done and what it is doing, Israel. Because it's for our perfection. Yahweh, he's a master, the author of perfection, Israel. He know what it is needed for his people. Hallelujah. I do barak you all those that are listening by Viv live stream. I do pray that you are able to take hold of something, a nugget of truth for tonight, Israel. For this Wednesday night, Torah true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do barak you all. We barak you all, you all that are listening by Viv live stream. Those that have gathered with us during Sukkoth. Our minds and our lives are, are with you, Israel. wherever you are, wherever you are scattered. Hallelujah. I do pray that the rock of Yahweh will rest upon you all tonight. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us shoot, let us turn, Israel. I'll be Yahweh, we do rock you for this day you have given us, this day of life, of high in you, Abba Yahweh. We do pray, Abba Yahweh, that the Torah that have went forth today by your fire, by your anointing, Yahweh, will remain with us. That we ponder the things which has been spoken unto us on this day, Abba Yahweh. That you have prepared and you have provided an offering for all Israel. That we can enter or go out of Mizraim without the burden, without the sin. Hallelujah. That we may enter into the place where we can offer unto you, Yahweh, an excellent offering of praise and amulation unto your name, Abba Yahweh. We do barak you for those that are listening, those that have come from near to far, you will take them back, Yahweh. It's your military, your malak will camp around all Israel. And all things we do barak you for what you have provided for us to eat today, Abba Yahweh. We do give you told off for the wood, Yahweh, to keep us warm, Abba Yahweh. There's so many things you have done for us, Yahweh. You have placed shelter over our heads, Yahweh. You have placed clothes on our backs. You have provided that which was needed for this day, and we do give you total for that, Abba Yahweh. And all things we do, but rock you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh, Barak, Hallelujah!